Hi, welcome again to QuickBase Education. Today, we're going to be looking at investment appraisal. And investment appraisal is one of those topics that students, is not one of the preferred topics for students, but today I'm going to just show you quickly some tricks in how to get through investment appraisal. Okay, but in particular, we're going to be focusing on the net present value. NPV. So before we get into the calculation, I have a question set up for you. So ensure that you watch the video um, right until the end. But before we get to that, I just have some information here that I want to share with you. What is investment appraisal? And first, it refers to the quantitative techniques used in evaluating the financial feasibility of a project. So if a, if a company is considering to invest in different projects they might want to do investment appraisal in order to select the best project that will give the the the, the highest returns and remember in business it's really to make a profit you know that they that's that's what business are there for they're there yes to provide goods and services you know for for different things but the main purpose of whatever the businesses are engage in they want to be profitable okay so net present value is used to calculate the total the current total value of a future stream of payments so there is a simple formula all we need to do is to have the present value of all cash inflows and then we minus the present value of all cash outflows. And here I put investment on it. So normally students would make the mistake of subtracting the present value of all the cash inflows from the present value of all the cash outflows. And when you look at the net present value, one of the things that you, you need to remember is that when we talk about net, we're thinking of something being subtracted from a, a, a gross amount okay like a gross salary and then you would have taken the deductions and then you would have net salary so we're thinking about that as well so when we talk about net present value we're talking about we are taking something from um, a, a, a large sum or a bigger sum to get the to get a net now the criteria for accepting projects when you're using net present value is one, if after calculating the net present value, you receive an amount that is greater than zero, then that would be a good project that the company can actually invest in. Or if the project after doing the net present value, you recognize that it is below zero or you're getting a negative figure then you would want to reject that if you're comparing two projects then you take the one with the with the highest net present value all right so let's jump over now to the question and i'm going to just show you use this question to highlight some of the critical points you know and if i'm going too fast you can always stop the video and you can go back over the information that i'm presenting here now look at this question a company is considering to invest 500,000 in a new project the project may give a series of cash inflows in the future as shown below now you need to pay attention to the future because when we're talking about investment we're thinking that okay we're going to invest in a particular scheme and we're expecting certain amount of money in the future okay so in year one they're saying that we probably will get eighty thousand dollars is in the future year two one hundred and twenty thousand year three one hundred and forty thousand and in year four fifty thousand they have given us the discount rate here as eight percent now pay attention to the discount rate right so when we use the discount rate what is happening is that we have a future amount that we would want to know what the present value of that amount is. But when we use interest rate, we have a present amount and we will want to know what the future amount is. And when you look at the formulas, if you're using a formulas, if you're using a, a, a formula, then you'll recognize that for one, you'll have K, which represents the um 
discount rate and R, which represent the interest rate, all right? But for the IB program, they have given us a discount table and you can see the discount table here on the right. So this is what we're gonna use now to do our calculation, which makes it far easier than if we were using the, the formula. Now, the first thing that you would want to do is to create a little table where you have the future cash inflows. You need to look for that in the question, okay? So you need to have like the different years, if you're going up to five years or three years. In this question, it's just four years. So year one, the future cash inflows, uh, in inflow would be 80,000. Year two, 120,000. Year three, 140,000. Year four, 50,000, okay? The next thing that you wanna put on the table is the discount rate. Okay, because we're using the discount rate that we can know what the present value of the future amount is, right? So the discount rate is 8%, and then on the right side of the column, you can put the present cash inflow, all right? Now, on the discount table, you look and you need to find 8%. Each of the calculation here represents a particular year. So for year one, here we have on the table 0 0.9259. This would be the discount rate for the first year, according to what we have on the table. So the amount for year one is 80,000. So all we need to do is to multiply uh, the 80,000 by the discount rate, which is 0 0.9259. And your answer is $74,072. In year two, 120,000, you go back over the table, you look for year two, 0 0.8573, you multiply that by 120,000, you have 102,872. And uh, I've done the calculation here for you, so you can always pause the video and you can look at what I've done here to get a better understanding of what you're supposed to do. After you have the present cash inflows now, remember you're, you're, you want a total amount. So what you'll be required to do is to total all the present cash inflows. I've, I've done the calculation here for you. And here we have $324,830. Now, the next part that you need to do to just complete this question, which is really easy, is to subtract the investment amount because the investment amount is the outflow, right? If, if you were to look at it like this, if you're gonna invest, you would need to go to the bank or take money from your pocket and you have to invest that. So that money is coming from you, okay? So the present value of cash outflows really is the investment. So just that's the, the, the part that students tend to, you know, make the little mistakes in, in, in that little part. So what we need to do to find the present value is really just to subtract the investment from the present cash flow. Now the investment does in the question is 500,000. Here we have it. And all we need to do is to have 324,830 and we're gonna subtract 500,000 from that. Now, the answer that we have here is a negative 175,170, 100, okay? Because this is a negative figure, as I said before, if the amount is below zero or is negative, then you're gonna reject. So in this case, this would not be probably the best project to invest in. And so you could reject this pro um, this this project. Okay, so this is basically what it is, guys. Um, remember, as I said before, you can always pause the video. You can go back over it and just see what I've done. Um, net present value is not difficult. Okay, all the best for your exams. All right, ciao.